morning, Natalia. Good morning. I'll try to share my screen to test, okay? Okay, sounds good. Mm. Good Can you see the presentation? Yes, please go forward and back. Okay, can you hear me well? Yes, I, yes, I can. I'll try to use headsets and you will say how it's better like this or with headsets, okay? Okay. Now is it better now? Much clearer, yes. So it doesn't really matter with of... headsets or without, right? Mm, it's not a big difference. Uh, please try to move the slides. Sorry, sorry, I cannot hear you properly. Try to okay. move through the slides. Go back and forth to see if it's mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. So I'm changing okay, the slides. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Super. So I leave it like it is, right? So for, we're waiting for the participants. Yes, yes please. Until you start your presentation, leave the slide with details on the screen for mm -hmm. everybody to see it and be able to log in. Okay. Again, maybe I'll log in to slide 02 because I haven't. <laughs> so I stop sharing for now and then I go to slide and then I will be back again. Okay. Okay, thank you, Nashwan. You're welcome.
Good morning, dear Danube region people. Good morning, dear Natalia. How are you? Diana, I'm fine, thank you. This is great. So this is the eighth edition of our webinars on new funding. And it is my great, great pleasure that we have Natalia Alicolot, our project officer in charge of priority 3.3. Enhancing the role of culture and sustainable tourism in economic development, social inclusion, and social innovation, belonging to the priority three, more social than new region. Natalia, uh, uh, there has been a great interest for your specific uh, objective. So uh, many people would like to participate and um, um try to provide some potential solutions to this important very important topic yes indeed mediana so this topic is very interesting and on the top of all it historically is very popular and in the danube region there are lots of a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. for the development of culture tourism but in the new danube region program through social perspective Thank you, Miriana, for presentation. And before I start, I would like to say that the record of our today's webinar will be available on the Danube Transnational Program website, and uh, you can find all the important information on the future Danube Region Program in a separate folder on the Danube Transnational Program's website. And one more thing. Here, we shared uh, um, the site where you can find the details of slido.com. So please post your questions there. Do not do it in the chat. And then we will be answering, Natalia will be answering to all of your questions. So thank you, Natalia, please. Thank you. So before we start, for you to understand where we are now, like a program, I would like to say that the Danube Region Program document was submitted to the European Commission for approval, and it was decided that the first call for proposals will be opened in September this year, 2023. The exact date is unknown, but still the indicative month is September this year. Before all the first calls documents are published, theoretically it will be available, they will be available on the program's website even this month. Such kind of documents like applicant's manual, which is a very important document for you to read and study. We, uh, like a program, held a series of webinars, and like Mariana said, this is like another continuation of the webinars which we held and uh, for you to digest the information and to think over your project idea possible partnership so today's event will be dedicated mostly to the content related issues and uh, as miriana said just a second i tried to move the slide Our today's uh, event will be dedicated to the specific objective 3.3, which is enhancing the role of culture and sustainable tourism in economic development, social inclusion and social innovation. Under their priority three, a more social Danube region. And the word social is uh, go, goes through all the specific objectives within this priority, and the special stress should be put on social issues. Uh, so uh, the presentation will cover the following topics, like transnational cooperation and the Danube region, the funding opportunity contents, specific objective 3.3, Needs and challenges will be highlighted. The funding opportunity on specific objective 3.3, focus and types of activities, target groups, expected results, budget, progressing towards the call and beyond. And in the end, we will have question and answer session. Uh, when registering, you also post questions. Those questions will be answered. And like Miriana said in the beginning, you have a Slido uh, password, so you can post questions in Slido as well. Transnational cooperation 
is an instrument of the EU cohesion policy that financially supports cooperation projects which go beyond national level in a geographically defined area in order to address common needs and challenges. The instrument is meant to complement, not compete, but complement with the mainstream programs. And transnational cooperation brings together policymakers, academia, research, civil society, and private actors from the partner countries in order to develop strategies, solutions that respond to the problems of the specific territory. The Danube region was identified like a, a region of barriers according to the territorial analysis, which was held at the programming state. And the slogan of the new program is from a region of barriers to a region of floats. Danube region is uh, very heterogeneous and diverse in terms of natural environment, cultural aspects, social economic development. It has highly fragmented political and administrative status and the highest number of countries and the highest number of borders. The effects of such fragmentation are decisive for the development of the whole region. Therefore, the related border effects should be tackled and mitigated. Uh, Danube region uh, has a unique situation with the opportunity to develop a better integration of the Danube space and there are EU and non-EU countries involved. And this fragmented status of the region, besides being a weakness, offers at the same time the opportunity for stronger cooperation and coordinated actions across these countries to overcome these barriers in the fields of innovation, environment, government, and social issues as well. What needs and challenges you have to analyze before you start developing your project proposal? Um, coordinated preservation and destination and heritage management of heritage sites and cultural landscapes. Fostering the integrated social, economic and environmental local development, cultural heritage and security, including for rural and remote areas also through community-led development, cooperation of stakeholders, institutions on heritage valorization. Uh, the Danube region is characterized by an outstanding cultural diversity that over the centuries has left a rich legacy of intangible and tangible heritage that is often not recognized for its potential towards economic development, social inclusion and social innovation. So what are the challenges? So as I have mentioned, these are insufficient efforts for making the assets and initiatives available to all, even if this can be a challenging process for minorities and in rural and remote areas. Um, part of the pro problem lies in the historically limited access to cultural and, herit uh, and heritage assets and initiatives both in a geographical and social inclusive sense in the Danube region. So efforts should therefore be made to make these assets and initiatives available to all, even if this can be a challenging process. With experience across 14 countries, transnational cooperation can support this with jointly developed valorization and touristic models and solutions in rural, remote areas and smaller cities. Um, missing another challenge is a missing inclusive strategic planning to guide and coordinate the valorization in many of the remote rural areas and smaller settlements, which are confronted with the lack of in-depth recognition of the heritage and cultural assets value and the potential that they have. Weak level of social innovation. Social innovation can be a driver for new approaches and can lead to diversification, thus securing the creating of creation of jobs and alternative additional income sources in areas where there is a lack of employment opportunity because of weak economy structures or poor accessibility. Priority three consists of three specific objectives, 
The specific objective 3.3 is the last one, and it has three main focuses. So when planning your project proposal, you have to stick to these focuses. The first focus is valorization of local cultural and natural heritage for the development of sustainable tourism products and tourism services in order to increase regional added value and employment. Focus two uh, is um, improvement of accessibility of cultural and natural heritage for all, amongst others, youth and vulnerable groups in order to promote social inclusion. Focus three relates to promoting community-led natural and cultural heritage management and associated nature-based and cultural tourism in rural areas and small cities. During the course of planning and implementation, the principles of sustainable development and sustainable and responsible tourism are expected to be in focus. Approaches towards social economic development through heritage, culture, and tourism initiatives should, um, as a standard, take full account of current and future economic, social, and environmental impacts. Let's look at the possible types of activities. They are not mandatory, they're just indicative ones uh, which came from partner states and it is not exhaustive list and maybe you will come up to us with a more brilliant, more interesting project proposals. But for you to understand what possibly can be financed, you can see on the slide that the possible type of action can relate to valorization of joint natural and cultural heritage and cultural activities through their elaboration of new or improved thematic initiatives. For example, cultural hiking, cycling, or other thematic routes and initiatives across the macro region with a special focus on rural or less visited areas. Valorization of joint heritage can support job creation which can support anti-poverty measures and better integration of vulnerable groups, the elderly, people with disabilities, and Roma. Another possible type of activity is capacity building and social innovation to better support valorization of joint cultural and natural heritage, in particular for tourism and the heritage management schemes, such as study, collection, preservation, digitization, digitalization, exhibition, and reinterpretation of joint tangible and intangible elements. Uh, promote sustainable and slow tourism concepts. So in the area of sustainable tourism, your project should seek to contribute to the attractiveness of the lesser visited locations by drawing people away from the overcrowded tourism centers and encouraging them to visit in the off season these places. Your project should seek a better distribution of the income that tourism and heritage generate, as well as reduction in the environment, the environmental stress that crowds can bring. You can develop plan, planning methodologies, model regions, and develop some management tools. In re, uh, and actions should promote and safeguard employability and employment possibilities. This is very important to vulnerable groups of host communities and capitalize on EUSDR projects in the interconnected areas of culture, nature, and tourism. So we have many possible types of actions, but as I have mentioned, they are just indicative ones. So now on this slide, you can see that you can address to improving the accessibility of tourism and culture infrastructure, products and services for vulnerable groups, such as minorities, people with disabilities, the elderly and youth in the regions with low levels of accessibility and high levels of vulnerable groups, innovative approaches, innovative digitization, digitalization, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things are encouraged. Capacity building and development of innovative models for community-based tourism 
to better secure the engagement of host communities by involving them in the planning, management, and implementation tourism development in their respective regions. You can also address to promoting quality products, services, and transnational infrastructure in the tourism and culture sector to support the social inclusion of disadvantaged people via new employment forms and jobs opportunities. This is especially in relation to regions with high share of ethnic minorities and areas with a large share of population at risk of poverty, including the youth, elderly and disabled. What is not financed and what is not supported by the project? This is very important for you to understand that the program does not support projects with predominant focus on research and data collection activities without translating their outcomes into applied solutions and of policy strategy planning. Projects without the expected social consideration. Projects with predominant focus on infrastructure. The new bridge and program does not finance large scale infrastructure. So uh, when you plan the project, you just cannot stipulate the activity just building the road. Yes, so it shouldn't be the focus. Some infrastructure is possible, but it shouldn't be overwhelmed in the budget and should not be predominant. Training, which is not part of piloting, for example, expanding existing training. Target groups we are referring to, these are local, regional and national public authorities. Organizations established and managed by public authorities. They can be responsible for environmental, tourist and cultural issues. Sectoral agencies, regional development agencies, social enterprises, employment organizations, tourist operators, tourist information centers, regional tourism board, destination management organizations, museums, research and development institutions, universities with research facilities, business support organizations, for example, like Chamber of Commerce, business innovation centers, higher education institutions, education training centers and schools, NGOs, private enterprises, and including SMEs, but they cannot be lead partners within the project. They can be only involved as partners. What are the expected results? The communities can benefit um, by achieving economic, social, and cultural opportunities. For example, increase employment and business opportunities, spaces for leisure, and an increased emotional attachment to their heritage through a greater sense of ownership and social cultural affiliation, a stronger local identity and sense of home in a globalized world. Linking communities and the heritage more closely will benefit both a better safeguarded heritage and a more prosperous communities. The transnational cooperation actions we suppose that they will result in a new and widened understandings of the value of local nature, cultural heritage, and the local community, and how this connects more widely in the Danube region. Concepts, plans, and models will result in accessible natural and cultural heritage and community-involved valorization of this through tourism. The existing touristic offer will be strengthened, widened, and more sustainable, and the offer will be expanded with new initiative on uh, finding the understanding and space to develop. The foundation will be provided for social inclusion through new and expanded community involvement in planning and with capacity built to support employment opportunities including social enterprises and SMEs. Uh, in line with the interact regulation, partner states have agreed to pull the available funds into a joint interact fund. The interact funds approach provides the opportunity for partners from non-member states to act as lead partners 
it wasn't applied before in the Danube transnational program. So this is a peculiarity and a new thing in the Danube region program, which is simplification and which gives more opportunities to non-EU countries. And it's very important and it should be used. And it is also um, welcomed by the program. So thus enhancing the possibility to initiate joint transnational activities by partners coming from third countries is a very important thing. And um, each project has to involve at least three directly financing partners from three different countries of the program area. The lead partner and at least two project partners and projects should involve at least one project partner from EU member state. And please pay attention that three partners maybe will not be sufficient for transnational cooperation. You can check the size of the partnership and the number of partnership with judging from the previous program, Southeast program, Danube transnational program. The average number of countries was 14, but in order to reach um, better results and uh, to have better transnational cooperation, you can maybe take into consideration to include more partners. And there will be an opportunity also to include associated strategic partners if their relevance is proved, because maybe these partners possess certain expertise, some um, knowledge can be shared. They can um, come from uh, or outside the program area within the EU and travel and accommodation costs will be financed or for associated strategic partners and these costs will be integrated in other partners budget. Slowly we came up to the budget issue. The interact funds budget of the program is more than 213 million euro which represents a single amount for all the 14 countries participating in the program. This amount will be complemented by the national contributions so the project partners participating in the supported pro uh, projects and individual projects um, will receive the European Union's support up to 80% of their total eligible costs at the partner level. So, 20% should, uh, should be co-financing within the project. It was decided by the partner states that 50% of the total budget, program's budget, will be allocated for the first call for proposals. The total allocated budget for the projects under the priority area 3, which includes three specific objectives, is more than 51 million euro. So it's quite a lot. So please pay attention that the program, Daniel Preaching program works on the reimbursement principle. So first you need to have financial capacity to pre-finance your activities by your, on your own. And after submitting their partner report and after it will be approved by the first level controls, you will be able to get money uh, from the program. So you have to make sure that project partners possess sufficient cash flow capacities. What are the further developments? Oh, all the information on the future Danube region program, as I have mentioned, is available on the Danube transnational program website for the time being. In the future, there will be for sure a separate Danube region website. It's just a process. And you can find their general information. You can also find uh, the new program documents. And as I have already mentioned, this month there will be published first call documents. They are under approval at this point of time. And uh, there will be a call announcement. After this, we will have events, um, thematic webinars, kickoff event will be held. Lead applicant seminars will be also um, held after the announcement of the call. We have national contact points in all partner countries and uh, 
their contacts are available on the website and they are very useful for you in terms of finding partners. It can be also used as a tool. You can contact your national contact point in your country and uh, stating that you just want to join partnership or you have a project idea or you are not sure about your legal status and they can help you with this. You just need some informational support and procurement procedures in your country. This is also national contact points which uh, should be addressed. Uh, there will be national events organized by national contact points. Um, and uh, of course, we are not going to leave you on your own with your project and project ideas. We will be available like project officers uh, for bilateral consultations. You can also write us in email. We can meet online, offline. We are based in Budapest. And you uh, also, when developing a project, have to pay attention uh, to the EU SDR priority areas. And uh, actions should capitalize on EU SDR projects in the interconnected areas of culture, nature, and tourism. The approach also coheres with the EUSDR and particularly priority area three with the valorization and sustainable tourism and also with the employment skills and capacity building of priority area nine and priority area 10 respectively. So this brought me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. If you have further questions or want to discuss any on feeding more details, you, as I have mentioned, you can organize a private consultation with me. So we are slowly uh, shifting to the question and answer session. Thank you. It was very, it's a very rounded presentation providing all the information. So I really enjoyed it. Now we will go to the questions that we that came along with uh, the registrations. So let's see uh, the first one. What are the chances of co-financing of two complementary projects originating from one previous successful project, Danor and Danor Plus? The reason is to widen the partnerships and intensify them beyond coordination and financing possibilities of a single follow-up project. Thank you. I would like to say that everything, of course, depends on your project idea and the quality of the application form. And you have to, the project has to demonstrate the added value and you, when developing an application, you need to go beyond your previous project proposal. And um, maybe also the uh, new thing, which is highly encouraged um, within the program, is the involvement of non-EU countries. Uh, I'm not sure whether I mentioned it, but it was on the slide that it is also uh, will be weighted during the assessment. And uh, uh, the involvement of non-EU countries is recommended. It is not obligatory. Of course, the project can be. Uh, very nice even without non-EU countries and can receive high scores, but it is just a recommendation and that what should be considered by the applicants, by the partners when applying. Thank you. Another one, possibilities for twinning between research partners within the Danube region. So, as I have mentioned, projects with predominant focus on research and data collection activities uh, without translating their outcomes into applied solutions, uh, planning, strategy will be not supported and you have to stay in focus uh, of the focuses of the specific objective 3.3, uh, enhancing the role of culture and sustainable tourism and economic development, social inclusion and social innovation. So try to take a look at three focuses and when developing your application form, you have also demonstrate um, the social element, community led uh, development, that community is involved in the decision making. It shouldn't be like a bottom up approach and uh, what uh, 
it depends on your project idea a lot actually, but uh, try to think how um, to uh, valorization development of tourism culture preservation of heritage can be developed through the prism of social aspects. Thank you, Natalia. And here is another one which follows like a continuation to, to the previous one. Is it possible to have projects with a focus on product development for traveling along the Danube cultural route and the marketing of the developed products? So actually it is one uh, of the focus areas. So valorization of local cultural and natural heritage. This is for the development of sustainable tourism products, um, tourism services in order to increase regional added value and employment. So again, pay attention on community based decision making, planning and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is natural heritage taken into consideration at the base as the base for cultural heritage and tourism? So, yes, natural heritage is also in the focus, but again, as I have already mentioned, it should be um, regarded through the prism of the social issues. And one of the focuses is promoting community led. So, this is the key word also mm -hmm. community led natural and cultural yeah. uh, heritage management and associated nature based and cultural tourism. And mostly we uh, will be concentrated on rural and remote areas, small cities with depopulation, with low level of employment. So your actions, they have to improve employment accessibility. So try to think through the prism of social issues. Again, I'm repeating myself. Thank you. And the last one, partnership and information activities. Uh, you already gave information on partnership and uh, the minimum number of partners and uh, it's uh, contained, but maybe we can say just um, a sentence regarding uh, finding uh, the partners. So, um, uh, there will be a platform, a matchmaking platform. We are working on it. So, hopefully in a month. Uh, you will have a, a platform uh, where you can navigate and uh, find uh, partners. Eventually, you can also um, present your uh, project idea and uh, we do hope that it will be as soon as possible. And as Natalia said, um, we have um, uh, national contact points. Uh, they are very helpful, they are very knowledgeable, and they will be very pleased to help you. So please turn to them and they have contacts with their counterparts in other partner countries, so they may help you. So thank you, Natalia. This was all um, the questions that uh, we received uh, through uh, registration. Um, now we will go to the questions. Uh, coming uh, through slider.com. So here's the first one. Hello, are the target groups both potential stakeholders and potential partners? Uh, target groups, so uh, the eligible partners um, will be described in details in the applicant's manual. You can follow them, but theoretically, yes, these are public structures, NGOs, so chambers of commerce, um, so all those organizations which are relevant for your partnership. Actually, uh, in the applicant's manual, you will find like the more extended list, but this specific objective actually targets the um, such organization like uh, it was mentioned. Thank you. How do you define cultural heritage? Uh, is it only about tangible heritage or does it also include intangible heritage, for example, involving theaters? Uh, yes, tangible and intangible heritage can be uh, in the core of your project. And uh, um, museums are also theaters, but of course it depends a lot on your project idea and how the social element is described, how uh, communities will benefit from it, how this bottom-up approach like community-led development will be described in your project proposal. But yes, tangible and tangible heritage um, can be also regarded by you. Yeah. Thank you. How many calls will there be 
in to, um, in total in the funding period, more or less? So theoretically, um, usually this plan, uh, we plan to have three calls for proposals, but maybe there will be more, hopefully not less. So depending also on the available funds and the number of application forms in the mm -hmm. calls for proposals. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I skipped one question, so we're going uh, back. Which other priorities are suitable for interaction of the project within this priority? So, I, uh, which other priority is mm -hmm. suitable? Uh, try to think within the focuses, and focuses are rather wide. So, there are three main focuses, and those possible types of activities I have already mentioned, they're just indicative. And you can, it is not an exhaustive list, and you can go beyond. So, try to take a look again at the focuses and um, think over other, well, pro we cannot say priorities, yes, but directions of your project application form. Thank you. Are there any specifics for an archaeological based project? Um, if it relates to uh, tourism, heritage, yes, of course, but it should be also, it depends on the project idea and how it is described. Again, how the social element is incorporated, how valorization, so this is also the key word of local cultural and natural heritage is presented. Thank you. Um, is there help for finding cultural organizations as partners? As we just said, we do hope that uh, in a month, more or less, there will be a matchmaking platform for finding partners. Also, please turn to your national contact points. And what you can do is to look around in the region. I'm quite sure that you already have contacts with other organizations, um, either in your country or in other countries. So please do some search, get in touch, in contact, and I'm, I'm sure that there might be some positive uh, reactions. Um, when do you plan the call deadline? Will it be one or two steps? Uh, yes, thank you for your question. Um, the, uh, it will be two step procedures. So, first of all, you will provide us the intention of interest will be a little bit more than just a concept, but less than a full application form. Uh, it will take some time to uh, um, assess this uh, intention of interest and after the second step, which will be in the end of this year, in the beginning of the next year. So theoretically, you can plan your project activities in the second half 2023, somewhere in autumn, because a lot depends on the number of application forms, um, because we do not know how much time we need for assessment. But um, we cannot say about deadline right now. All the information will be available when uh, there will be call announcement. So please follow the website and you can find all the information there. Thank you. What does directly financing partners mean? Directly financing partners are those partners which are um, part of the partnership agreement and directly receive financing from the lead partner. The program transfers money to after approved reports to the lead partner and the lead partner in its turn transfers money to other partners which are financial partners and have their separate budgets within the project. Associated strategic partners, they do not have their separate budgets. Their budget is incorporated in other partners' budget on the travel and accommodation costs. So, financing partners are just, we can say, simple partners within the project. Lead partner and project partners. Thank you. Is it allowed to make profits from the activities during the project duration and after? Well, it's a quite sensible question, which I'm not ready to answer you because the, uh, in, I'm not sure whether it will be regulated somehow. 
but uh, it's a question mostly to our financials and uh, the eligibility of expenditures are being at the stage of approval and when everything all uh, first call documents will be developed uh, there will be an opportunity to answer this question thank you natalia will it be eligible one partner to participate in more than one project uh i yes but it depends on your financial capacity on your uh, human resources and of course uh, how will you be able to manage uh, participating in two projects so there are uh, no restrictions mm -hmm. yeah. thank you so it seems that uh, we have no more questions that you answer to all of them so we have um, uh, 91 participants, Natalia. So this is a huge number. Okay, there is one more. Developing a cycling route, mainly by signposting, would it be possible to finance small scale infra development, for example, stabilization? Um, I think yes, but uh, when it relates to infrastructure, it should be very uh, well justified and it should um, not be a predominant and sh it shouldn't be overwhelming in the budget. It shouldn't be like 70-80% in your budget. And of course, the transnational um, effect of such kind of infrastructure should be also demonstrated. Uh, so. Of course, it depends how you present, how you plan. So theoretically, yes, but also it depends a lot on their description in the application form. Thank you very much. No questions. So thank you, Natalia. It was uh, it was really nice, and uh, we have many participants. So. Uh, good luck, and uh, we do hope that uh, your project proposals will come in. There will be a great influence of your great idea. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you all for joining our today's webinar, for your participation, for your time. Contact us in case you have any questions. Thank See you. Bye-bye.